Like I always think about that. I feel like I'm a snake. I feel like I'm always just like shedding skin and learning. But that's because I'm learning from myself. Like when I perform, I often voice record myself. Um, or I just take mental notes and be like, oh, mm, not going to do that again. Or, oh, we should change that. I think that's the cool thing about um, being able to perform live and having an honest audience. And yeah. actually, my audience is very nice to me. And they'll come up to me and be like, hey, like I have a suggestion. Like, oh, you should mention like you used to do musical theater. And I'm just like, thank you. Or they'll be like, hey, um, what's that language that you were like speaking in at the top of that poem? I think you should, you know, tell your audience about that because not everybody knows. And I'm just like, wow, that's really cool. Like it's it's things like that. Like I never get anything like negative. It's always like positive. Oftentimes when I'm going to create a poem, um, I literally will hear something. It could be like a misheard lyric. And I would just like create my own line and write it down. And then that'll spark something else. Or I'll be on the um, SEPTA and hear some wild stuff. You know, people on SEPTA are wild. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just recreate that moment um, and use segments. Or it could be like somebody walking down the street and like wearing like something blue. And I'll be like, her jeans are the color of the sky or something like that. And then I'll just like, take it off from there. Some things I do remember, some things I just write down um, just real quick on my phone or in my notes um, <clears throat> on my journal. When I'm doing my loops and stuff, a lot of the times I will just do sounds and then eventually, like I think in words, like no matter if it's a sound, I'll often like hear the sound, but I'll see the word like splat, I'll just see the splat, the word splat as mm -hmm. I'm hearing the sound. Um, so when I'm doing my loops and I'm like laying down the drafts of them, I decide to like then turn them into words somewhere along the line, like goosebumps. It started out like, uh, just sounds. My favorite. Yeah, your favorite. It started out just sounds. Uh, when I first performed it at Songs for the Soul, mm -hmm. it was just all sounds and I was just like, oh, I can turn this into words. I trace. college knowing that like my final product would be a book um, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted it to be about but um, I knew I had to have something because I didn't want it to just stop at the thesis project I wanted it to grow into my first book and I'm blessed that that's happened uh, right not even a year out of college um, Soho Publishing scooped me up my first poem which is the last poem in my collection is titled uh, John that John and I wrote this in about 2015. Um, I was asked by UArts to create a poem for the freshman orientation ceremony. And I was like, I really want a poem that welcomes people to Philadelphia because not everything that happens in Philadelphia happens elsewhere. Like going to school and be like, yeah, girl, I got this homie from the corner store. They'd be like, you mean Wawa? And I'm like, no, girl, the corner store, I got the corner store. I don't know who Poppy is. I thought I heard who Poppy was. So like those experiences made me be like, okay, I want to share like my day-to-day -day world with the rest of the world um, and I started with that one poem and then I branched off into like um, cheesesteak poem and then the fuck America poem and I just had so many memories about like my block and living in Philadelphia um, and just a lot of like revelations about things such as like the shoes on the telephone lines and stuff and I thought like if I was going to have a book of poetry I know a lot of people aren't really interested in poetry and reading poetry more so. Like they appreciate the spoken word arts, but not necessarily sitting down going to poetry readings. So I said, what can I do to attract a reader? And I was like, what's more powerful than saying like, fuck America. <laughs> like you want to be like, fuck, wait a minute, what's going on? And then you read it and you realize it's not really about America. It's about Philadelphia and how um, we are. Fuck America, I be Philly. I be accents, ricochet, and 215. I be food, desert, and wick check. 
I be potholes swallowing tires like school kill. I be corners teddy bears clasping onto candles. I be hand-drawn designs screaming free my mans or rest in peace. I be fuck you mean dickhead. I be v-necks and butters. I be hallelujah and hold up wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. When I brought that Ashton Martin, y'all thought it was rented. I be in the private institutions with them rich folk. I be more pock than po pound or plath. I be closed high school turned rooftop bar. I be belly bubbling for free lunch. I be school children clogged up trolley rides. I be them puppies and strollers at Rittenhouse. I never felt American. Like I never felt like, oh, I'm a proud American. This is America. I just always felt like Philly. Like I am from Philly. That's just, it's me. It's my family. Mm -hmm. So I wrote that poem. I was just like, fuck America. I be Philly. Nobody really celebrates the hood. like. They talk about the struggle of living in the hood and giving up, getting up out of the hood, but like it made a lot of people who they are. I want to write like how I talk, like I text like how I talk, like exactly like y'all, why, <laughs> why a w? That's how I spell it. That's how I say it. So I said, why am I not doing that in poetry? It's so authentic to me. Yeah. Um, and then in my notes, I write like how I talk. So I'm like, why am I editing it to give to a bunch of people? Sometimes when I was in workshop, they would look at my work and be like, oh, you know, that's not the right spelling. But then after I told them, like, this is the way that my grandma speaks, my great grandma, like, this is my language. Um, they were like, oh, OK, so this is not just you trying to be like ghetto. This is you actually like trying to do something. So I think probably <clears throat> until I see a lot of that in um, American literature and it's like as um, thought of as highly as other literature, then I'll probably just feel like. I'm from Philly. Fuck America. Yeah. My grandma <laughs> raised me um, since I was seven days old um, on my dad's side of the family, so I have a very close connection to my dad's side of the family. My grandmother was very heavy in like Philadelphia um, politics and was under some great political figures growing up. So when I was younger, I would just like take my Barbies and be playing underneath the desk, and she would be like over there with like. Um, I want to see Walden and see the West Tucker and they'll be like talking about like for example like Tupac and Biggie and other people in Freeway also mm -hmm. about how like they should stop putting like violence and stuff in their lyrics and they would be like going around national television. My dad's side of the family is like uh, musicians and um, a lot of political figures um, very big on like fighting for freedom. My great great grand aunt was um, Amelia Boynton Robinson uh, she was like the civil rights activist um she stood with like martin luther king and um so she was like really close she named her daughter carver after george washington carver oh, um, so. oh my god <laughs> are you serious yes yeah. um and she uh would, like the walk uh to bloody sunday she um was just trying to march to get voting rights Um, they just started like spraying and hosing down and beating people and attacking them with dogs just simply for trying to cross into the main capital in Alabama when Edmund Pettus. She was touring like America just talking about like her experiences and talking about um, people's rights and so she passed, I believe she was like 102. because my best friend is now with um, the organization um, that's founded in her name and they're going around uh, the U.S. sharing her story so I was just like that's so funny because my best friend didn't even know that was like my aunt um, so like the poor figures like that you may write me down in history but you're big for sit you may try to be in the very minute but still like dust I rise you may poetry that interests me. It's used a lot of times in Black History programs, so that was like the first poem that I memorized. Um, and it was just, I started crying because it was just so much. Like, before we even went to the ceremony, the uh, Selma police, like Alabama police sheriff, um, they came to her house and like apologized for like 
fucking shit up and being terrible. And I thought that was so oh. cool that um, you know they could take that fault and be like, listen, we're sorry, we almost killed you because for because no, you wanted to be black and vote and on the bridge that again she almost like died on. They put a plaque of her face on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Um, so it was just all those emotions. It's like wow, I get to say this this poem. I get to be a part of history, and I just started crying because I was like, we are still rising. My family has always like been about telling things the honest truth so it wasn't like they waited until i was like older to talk about like racism like when i was in fifth grade um nine turning ten i went to ghana it was a crazy experience like i still get chills like we went to the slave caves and like i remember like they shut the door to really ten of us in there and i felt like i couldn't breathe but like they would shove hundreds of people in there like you would look in the crevice and you would see like you think it's dust but it's actual like human feces because they were forced to just stand in there thousands of people and i was just so like this is so scary and then i went to the um the river and they actually found a pair of shackles because it was drought season but aside from that i get i got to um, learn how to authentically like press kente claw so, so there was a lot of things that were like um beautiful about it but it also made me think about like where i'm from and i'm blessed like actually know like my family's from ghana the zanti tribe and just being like walk their footsteps just being surrounded by all of that just made me feel like my words matter like i had to do something and i knew me personally i'm not really the one to be out there protesting like that's just not my style of protesting but me writing poetry with slang in it and like having it published is like i feel like my own protest like my art itself is like a protest <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm.